Hey folks, Dan for DNN Custom Creations. It's been a long time since I made a video, and today I want to do a little thing that has to do with your limit switches. <clears throat> if you've bought the kit and uh, installed the limit switch or getting ready to uh, do so, I'm not going to spend any time on uh, installation because the instructions are great and there's already a couple videos out there online. Uh, what I wanted to do uh, unique about this one is if you've installed some of the drag chains or anything that might interfere with that installation, uh, that's what I want to cover today, as well as a couple little tips on how to set your switches to maximize you get your cut area. There's a number of times when I've needed every bit of that 33 and a third inches or whatever it is in the, uh, in the Y. And uh, I want to make sure when I install this limit switches that I don't minimize that and cut it down to anything really less than that. And yet still get to the point where the limit switches do what they're supposed to do, which is keep you from banging into the limits. Uh, so um, I will, it's going to be a real short video, uh, and I will show you also uh, how I routed the cabling uh, since I do have drag chains and uh, perhaps you've done the same uh, installation that I've done on drag chains or you've got a different setup. Uh, regardless, if you're using drag chains, you need to take that into account. So uh, I'll get set up and show you a couple little tricks or tips and uh, let you see how I've set mine up. All right, hold, well, thank you. Okay, the first thing uh, let's talk about is the uh, Y-axis switch. So uh, i give you a perspective here. So uh, the, uh, Axis has moved all the way back to the back because I'm trying to set where the switch is. This is the one here that uh, the bearing block, when it moves, is the one that activates that switch uh, and sets your limit. Uh, it's installed just the way the instructions have it. And now I'm trying to finally set uh, where it actually activates. And you can see. Uh, the amount of distance I have between uh, the bearing block bearings and the uh, rail, uh, uh, there's not a lot. There's maybe, I don't know, eighth of an inch, uh, if, if that. You can see uh, there's not much. And that's where I would like the switch to actually activate. Uh, that will maximize my amount of travel uh, and yet still give me a little bit of room in case there's an issue. Um, I'm gonna put this uh, camera in the mount so I'm not uh, uh, jerking it around a little bit and I'll be right back. Okay, the way I'm gonna set this is I've connected um, uh, ohmmeter uh, to the switch. Now switches are just, uh, that doesn't, there's no polarity so it doesn't matter what uh, lead you put on it. Uh, and so I've basically connected a leader, uh, a meter, uh, to that. And you know, you've got the setting that looks like a little omega. That's your ohms. If you're not familiar with uh, resistance and electricity, and so forth. And uh, any cheap continuity meter uh, will do this. I mean, you can get a five-dollar meter from Harbor Freight that'll do this. And so when you see that it's connected and the switch is not operated you notice that it's 2.8 ohms. And if I activate it, you'll see that it goes to OL, which means over the limit, which basically means that there are no ohms uh, and it's shorted out or closed in our particular case because of the switch. And so what I'm going to do is move the carriage in this Y axis until that uh, bearing block hits the switch and we see that number go to OL and that's where this thing will activate. And then we're gonna check and see how close the bearings are to the uh, block. So here we go. <clears throat> okay, so we're finally tuned. I'm gonna go very slowly till we hit, there we go. Okay, the switch is now closed and let's look at uh, how much room we've got between the bearing and uh, the carriage there. That's, there's not a lot, that's about a sixteenth of an inch. Now, I'm gonna move it back away a little bit and show you an easy way to make this adjustment.
So we're there now. Uh, we've moved that bearing block away probably, I don't know, three sixteenths of an inch, a little more than an eighth. <clears throat> and even though this is tight, uh, it's tight enough where I would leave it, when you rotate this, you'll notice that this uh, block that the switch is mounted on rocks a little bit. And so I can there. So I have now moved that switch just simply by rotating the mount that the switch is on. And then we, it will now close at that location. And so let's, uh, I'll move it away and I'll move it back. until we make contact right there. And now notice that the, uh, the bearings are uh, probably twice what they were before. So that's an easy way without having to try and loosen that nut and uh, you know, try and get it in place and then lock the nut down. This whole bracket will, will rotate even though the, the nut is tight enough to uh, leave it there uh, but you can, and by moving, just using that nut, going back and forth, you can rotate that switch enough to probably change, oh, well, I would say at least an eighth of an inch, if not a little bit more. And so that's an easy way to adjust that. All right, uh, let's go to the next step. Okay, for the x-axis limit switch, uh, I was fortunate in the method that I use for mounting my drag chains. I could actually use the uh, the bracket, the switch bracket that they provided. Uh, you can see it's pretty darn close, um, but it's uh, it's it's just enough where I was able to use that. I thought I was going to have to make a special bracket, uh, but uh, fortunately I didn't need to. Uh, <clears throat> you can see uh, that mounting. Let's see if I can get you down here uh, for that uh, drag chain. Uh, and again, I want to maximize how much travel I can. And in fact, in this particular case, you can see that it's actually the switch bracket, not the bolt that goes through that uh, carriage rail, that's the limiting factor. Uh, so, but I, the adjustment is pretty much the same. In this particular case, I've cranked it, uh, the bolt down uh, enough so that it it's uh, got a lot of friction on that uh, switch block or switch, switch mount, but uh, you still uh, can adjust it and then hold it in place with a wrench while you tighten the rest and it should stay there. So um, let's uh, see what we've got. You can see, see I'm, not, I'm gonna probably have to hold this. I can't get the camera mount in this uh, far to, um, allow us to see this but we'll see so as this carriage comes in the x let's go until we see that value go to over uh, outer limit over limit ol and we know that's the place where then the switch has just made contact there we go now let's uh, see if we can't see how close we are to banging the end of that travel and again as i mentioned it's the um, the bracket that is actually, you can see there, hopefully without it being too uh, blurry, you can see uh, that's, that's less than an eighth of an inch. And so if I wanted to change that, if I wanted to make a larger gap, all you basically need to do is uh, you could see, let's do a top down view and you can see the angle of that bracket and I'm gonna use a screwdriver so my hand's not in the way, but I'm gonna push on that bracket. And you can see I've moved it now so that it's pretty well straight. And then now let's uh, back this thing away. Okay, and then let's come back until it makes contact again, until the switch closes. All right, right there. And let's see what the difference is now. If I can find out where the heck we are. Oh, okay, here we go. 
All right, you can see now the gap has, uh, it's probably twice what it was before. And that, you know, from a conservative standpoint, that's probably uh, where I'll leave it. I may try and shorten it up a little bit, uh, but not too much. But uh, now that it's adjusted, uh, now if you will um, hold the nut on top and bottom and keep it from turning, then that should stay in that location. Okay, the last part of this is uh, just to show you uh, how I ran the cabling. And again, it's probably only pertinent to uh, folks that have installed uh, drag chains, uh, whether you followed uh, the way I did it or you did another one. But regardless, <clears throat> so here is the uh, switch uh, and for the X switch, and that's the one that you really have to worry about uh, when you travel, when it's moving in a wide direction. Uh, that's the one that you have to make sure that it doesn't get hung up on something or whatever. So here in my particular case, uh, from the switch, I go around and I go through my drag chains, um, come back here, and here's where I go down inside. Uh, there's the connector that's going to, um, you know, mount uh, for the, the limit switches. But uh, it tees here. And so part of it again goes to the X. The other part comes here and travels up uh, and comes up to the top here. And I've just uh, done some self-tapping screws with some uh, hose, uh, not hose clamps, but wire clamps to uh, keep that from moving. And made sure that, uh, you know, it's not gonna rub on anything that would, you know, cause some chafing issues from vibration and that sort of thing. Uh, but that's, uh, that's really it. And uh, so there's nothing else in this video. I mean, uh, the other people have done the videos on how to set it up and setting your soft limits and that sort of thing. Uh, just follow what they've done because they did a great job. Okay. All right, folks. Thanks. Dan from DNN Custom Creations.